Down four, 321 left. Nash cross court Finley wide open, fakes the three. Gives it to Whiskey, drives by Ewing to the glass for the jam. Dirk Nowitzki with a pump fake and a drive for the jam. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fan, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hey, hey guys, welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, I want to take a look at NBA legends giving their opinion about how good Dirk Nowitzki really was. This is the second Dirk Nowitzki NBA Legends video, but I found some new clips that you hopefully haven't seen before. But before we dive into that, let me ask you guys for a small favor. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy the content. All right, enough said. Let's get right into it. So the first player's opinion that we're going to take a look at is Jason Kidd. Obviously a teammate of Dirk Nowitzki, so let's hear what he has to say. Coming back to Dallas for the second time uh, to, to be able to meet uh, the big German, Dirk Nowitzki, uh, was, I was in awe um, because you got to see him, you know, uh, from afar and you hear about the things, his work ethic and the things he did, you know, on the court and, and how dominant he was. Now to be a teammate, I thought I was like a kid in a candy store. When you talk about in the game evolving and here's this guy, you know, seven feet tall, shoots it like, you know, Larry Bird just can score, can beat you in so many ways. One of the most unguardable shots. Dirk Nowitzki. There was a narrative back in the 90s and that, you know, foreign players just weren't good. You know, they weren't good enough to play in the NBA. They weren't tough enough. You know, wh whether that narrative was fair or not, that was out there. And Dirk was one of the first guys as a young guy coming in the league, learning, gaining respect, getting better, becoming an all-star, eventually an MVP, eventually a champion, and I think changing that narrative. During our championship run, um, me and Dirk uh, was playing one-on-one. -on -one, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, we figured he was going to be cross match as well as I, you know what I'm saying, on multiple defenders. It was going to make it very interesting challenge. So that was one of the funnest things we did, though. We competed practice and stuff but we was able to really help each other i remember there was my first kind of couple rookie games and we played dirk and i remember i was like dang i'm playing dirk nowitzki and the next thing you know he's yelling give me the burger and i'm like what's the bur oh the basket you know the next thing you know he gave me 32. <laughs> and i was so happy after the game i was like man did you see how good he was and my parents were like jenny he just barbecued you i said what it looks there was nothing i could do and that was the thing with Dirk. There's nothing you could do. And the next clip that we're going to take a look at involves Steve Nash. Again, a teammate of Dirk Nowitzki, who had a pretty successful run with the Dallas Mavericks. Dirk and I came there as like guys that people were really unsure about. Yeah. I, I was traded there. The day I came for my press conference after the draft, Dirk came to for his. He was the first pick, whatever. I can't remember. He was like picks like seven eight nine or whatever it was and he i think he was he'd risen quickly like he like was totally not known and then he made his way to the hoop summit then like at 38 i played on the against U him in that you game did? Yeah. He, that was he, like, he went off right yeah. i really get to play in that right. game but yeah i was he, yeah he he went off and so he had this quick rise and so the mavs were like we need him let's get him over here let's get him assimilated he was like you know we we remember him now as like this sh like w not only a great player but like a sh killer at the end of games right so like yeah. you know like yeah, closer yeah. right he wasn't that wasn't his personality at first he had to overcome with a lot of hard work and like you know he grew into that i didn't know how great he was until one day i'm, I'm at tnt and i saw that he passed me up on the score and i'm like wait he and i had to go back and make sure that you know they were cheating me out and then I had to look, and I was like, man, he's really been consistent, especially after his second and third year. Will always be 
always be recognized as one of the greatest Mavericks ever. Blessed. There was only one guy on that list that was the main guy. So my question is, can your main guy be a stretch four guy? No. Because Dirk, I mean, because no. Dirk, I mean, Dirk and Whiskey is the only main guy that was a stretch four guy that led his team to a championship. See, but I think Dirk is a little bit different. Yeah. I think Dirk and Kevin Durant, they're a little bit different because they get the ball. When we start talking about stretch forward, we're basically talking about who stands out there and opens up the court. Yeah. I don't think Dirk is a stretch four. Uh, I think Dirk, Dirk's a guy you get a ball to and let him go. Especially Dirk in his earlier years, you could put him at that elbow throw. line area or that pinch post. He did the fadeaway with the knee up where guys now, Kevin Durant, are copying him yeah. with the fadeaway. So he had a back-to-the-basket game as well. But on the flip side, he just so happened to be one of the best 6'10", 6'11", shooters our, right. this game has ever seen. I'm proud of because I played against him. Uh, we battled against each other. And when he came in the league, I don't know if his ceiling was that high or his expectation is. And that's Dirk Nowitzki. I mean, I got a chance to play for Don Nelson, and I think Don Nelson needs to be credited for the way that this kid played because if you would have put him in the post at a young age, I don't know if he would have been this successful. But being able in that mid-range, then stretching at the three-pointer, and as a big guy, you know, Bosh, we weren't used to when you first come in the league playing out on that three-point line, moving laterally, so hard to stop Dirk Nowitzki when he has that kickstand and he's going. Well, yeah, I mean, he's always been a player to play to his strength. Yeah. He's got that high release. Yeah. He's got a great post game, but he extends extended it a little bit, yes. that Carl Malone elbow type area, yeah. the extended post, he became a master at that and could always face you up and knock shots down as well as shoot threes. And I mean, he was just such a great competitor and just to, you know, play against him, it's not much you can do. I mean, look at how good defense come on. you had. You I mean, stop yeah, him, he jumps off the wrong he, foot. And, and the things that people don't see, he gives you that nudge yeah. and that sends you flying a little bit and you don't want to foul. Yeah. And I mean, He's the guy that Man, really made you know, that one-legged yeah, jumper yeah. really very popular. I mean, I, I watched him when he was in high school. I think he played against the USA Select team. Uh. And I watched this dude score like 35, 12 rebounds. And I never really seen a big dude like that that Seven can go foot, coast man. to coast, yeah. stop on a dime and pull up for a three. I seen the Chris Chris Webbers and, 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 and the KGs who can push it and make plays, but never a big dude who can stop and mix somebody and pull up with a soft touch on the three. So, you know, Dirk is a, a, a legend to me because of he's one of a kind. You know what I mean? He's truly one of a kind. Yeah, and when you talk about, you know, one of the kind, one of a kind and, and legends, you know, we, we have one sitting next to us that's getting ready to go into the Hall of Fame. That's so. right. <laughs> how, how did you do against Dirk? Hey, well, I tell you, I, I used to go at Dirk because a player that's great on oh. offense, you make him pay on the defensive end. So I tried to put him in a mixer, okay, inside and outside, keep him moving oh. in. Okay, see, we're out. Oh, 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 dunk that, big fella. Come on, what's that? Okay, you know, big fella. Say, <laughs> He's amazing. One of my favorite players ever. Um, play the game. Um, just his ability, what he's able to do, you know, at his size. His ability to shoot the ball. His ability to sacrifice. Dirt battles. <laughs> That's the first thing that come to my mind. Playing each other twice in a... Uh, NBA championship, you're going to walk away with some scars. You're going to walk away with a healthy version of dislike <laughs> and a healthy version of, of how much you respect and how much love that you can have for a competitor. I love Dirk as a career he had and a career that is a legendary career that a lot of people still, once again, don't talk about. I love the fact that, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, that we get to go in the Hall of Fame together. And just to be able to compete against him and win, you know, win a championship in 06, that really solidified, like, my career and, and my talents. And then to watch him come back and win his in 2011, even though it hurt us as a team, as a fan of the game, I can appreciate what that did for the game of basketball and what that did for one of the game's greatest players. One of the most incredible comebacks in NBA Finals history. That one championship was enough. He'll neither win three, four, or five. That one for him, um, the way he did it, the route to get there, Russell, that was special. Michael changed the game. Michael changed the game. I think Dirk Nowitzki changed the game for big men coming in because 25 years ago, Dirk is on the low post. And not only that, the floodgates really opened for international players um, by looking at the success of Dirk. And, you know, arguably, and I will say this, he's probably the best big man shooter the game has ever seen. Certainly seven-footer. And the skills that he possessed because he was that inside, outside threat, um, if you look at a lot of the international players and look at our game today, how so much is predicated with having a 
stretch four and a stretch five, being able to knock down threes, uh, you know, be the trailer on a break and knock down threes. That's all because of, of Dirk. So how good was Dirk Nowitzki in my opinion? Well, I, I'm not sure if I said it that often on the show, but when I saw the 2011 finals and the performance of Dirk Nowitzki, he in my opinion was first class. Like he was in the upper class of NBA legends. The NBA legend of NBA legends. And in general, if we take a look at his career, I love players who stay their entire career with one franchise. And he was not only the franchise player, but he was the face of Dallas. And to me, I gotta be honest, Dirk Nowitzki is not only one of the greatest players of all time, he's probably my second greatest European player of all time. Just my opinion. Anyway, you guys, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications button. And I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.